Hi, everybody. I really appreciate you tuning in today. It's Dr. Sarah, and I have a very intriguing and exciting topic to discuss with you. It's on a supplement which is very well respected as an antioxidant and how that can actually be used to support our mental health. Now, this is the start of a series on how this popular NAC, otherwise known as N-acetylcysteine, and essential oils, because I'm going to bring those in there too, of course, right, because they're my favorite healing modality, can support emotional health in more than one holistic way. So let me start from the beginning. First of all, what the heck is NAC? NAC is otherwise known as N-acetylcysteine, as I had mentioned, and it's very well known and used for its ability to be a cellular defender and a, quote, liver savior. Specifically, it's the precursor to the amino acid L-cysteine and the master antioxidant, which you've probably heard of if you've been in the health space for even a little bit, glutathione. Now, glutathione has a lot of actions in helping to minimize the damage of the oxidative stress that can occur in our body um, when it gets kind of runs amok and out of hand. Now, oxidative stress is defined as the disturbance in the balance between the production of free radicals or reactive oxygen species and antioxidant defenses. Dr. Sarah, say what? Is that what you're thinking? That's a lot of big words. So don't worry. I have learned to respect your sanity and maintain your attention by refraining from a long discussion on molecular chemistry and decoding the medical jargon. So that's what I'm going to do today. Think of antioxidants as mediators in a process where atomic balance has gotten a little out of hand. This is due to overzealous free radicals grabbing more than their fair share of subatomic particles, aka electrons. So we need these defenders to prevent the harm that these greedy electron thieves can cause to our cellular health during their hostile and charged takeovers. Do you like those references? I hope they were helpful. But here's where NAC comes in. It's actually a supplement that has earned respect from both, quote, sides of medicine, whether it's integrative doctors or conventionally oriented physicians. It's actually the standard of care intervention for treating people who have a Tylenol or acetaminophen overdose because too high levels of this over-the-counter pain medication can actually cause liver toxicity. It's actually one of the most common causes of liver toxicity. And NAC has been known to pro, um, prevent damage, and it's through its ability to restore the master antioxidant glutathione. I have a little summary on how um, from the Utah Poison Control, as well as references in my accompanying blog if you want more details, but basically there's a toxic effect of acetaminophen in the liver by the formation of metabolites aka known as NAPQI, and just to make my tongue twist or hard, that's called N-acetyl-P-benzoquinoamamine, which is why they call it NAPQI. And that is conjugated by glutathione, which basically makes it um, less harmful to the body and uh, it enhances its non-toxic metabolism and detoxifying of it and saving the liver. So NAC can help the body kind of save it. It's one form of an antioxidant from when the, there's too much stress on the body from these free radicals, whether they be from too many toxins that we're producing, um, too much cellular cleanup that's going on in our body faster than, you know, then uh, we can um, get rid of it. So antioxidants are important, and we can either make them internally or we can take them through our food or or what um, supplements we take. And I'll get into a little bit more about that later regarding supplements. 
But beyond its glutathione benefits, this is what really piqued my interest, is I was reviewing NAC and its relationship to being used in psychiatric disorders. I'd been aware previously that it had been used in addiction, but I wasn't fully cognizant of the extent of studies on its intervention for extreme mental health issues. We're talking um, schizophrenia and even treatment resistance resistant obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, this had me take a second pause because you may remember that I'm not a big fan of trying to medicate away any symptom, including depression or mental health issue with a pill, whether it be synthetic or natural, right? It's just a lot more complicated than popping a pill and hoping that symptoms go away. Our brain is a lot more complicated than that, and there's many different factors that can cause it to go off balance, which I'll get to in the next video. But the implications of having something that can support and decrease symptoms so that a person can better do their treatment, whether it be like, say, for OCD exposure response prevention, which is a form of cognitive-based therapy that's a gold standard, um, or other forms of um, therapy or neurofeedback for the brain. This, with a supplement, with such a low risk to potential benefit ratio, even if it's short term or, um, you know, even if it's just a little bit helpful to help people get through, is very exciting for me because this is a very misunderstood, heavily stigmatized an underserved population in healthcare. Um, we think of the brain, we think of how it's functioning, we think of anxiety and depression as just emotions, and it goes a lot deeper than that. It's a multifactorial issue. It's um, brain health and mental health. So I wanted to know more about how it worked. So how does it work? I'm going to leave you hanging a little bit on that because I wanted you to understand its first role in oxidative stress, and that's going to come in handy when we talk about how it works in the brain. But there's other mechanisms, too. So I'll finish up with that next time. I'll talk about its efficacy and safety and the um, how it validates that mental health is bigger than a one-pill-for-all solution. I'm also going to start to highlight how uh, any brain in need of support can benefit from the physical, emotional, and spiritual impact of essential oils. So you'll want to stay tuned for that. And if you want more details on oxidative st stress and the free radical theory, I have a whole box with an explanation from the Harvard School of Public Health on free radicals and antioxidants. And I also go into why I believe that many of the studies on antioxidants Accidents are biased and this is because a lot of times they aren't prescribed in a way that someone such as an integrative doctor schooled in the mechanism of actions of these nutrients minerals or nutraceuticals would apply them a lot of times they're just isolating one specific nutrient or compound without even balancing compounds and nutrients that interact with it, taking baseline measurements, accounting for individual differences, and deficiency states, right? So if you don't need calcium, it's not going to work, and it could actually, could potentially cause an imbalance of your system of other nutrients that could potentially cause side effects. That's why we want balance. Um, a lot of times some of these studies are not using appropriate dosage, and they're using an inactive form, not the standard, which has been used in um, some clinical trials to show its efficacy. So you want to be careful. Like I talked about antioxidants and how they, um, they could be taken from supplements. Of course, you want to use the right ones, and you want to make sure that they're safe ones that your healthcare provider and you know are uh, effective and will work with you in your healthcare regimen to make sure everything's balanced out. Uh, trials are helpful, and clinical trials are good, but we have to take them and look for any potential biases, who studied the, um, who funded the studies, and also look at the individual, because we always want to bring it back to, is this study applicable to the person sitting in front of me? At least that's what I do when I'm um, 
working with my clients and that's what most integrative docs and all my wonderful colleagues that I know of will be doing. So remember before you implement anything you always want to check with your healthcare provider. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer times the nth degree which will also be posted in my blog so you want to read that and I hope you come back for my next video. Thanks for watching and I hope this interests you as much as me. I will be back. Have a great day everybody.